It's time for... The Northwoods Cooking Show! Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hello, and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy, and today we're going to be making some wonderful, wonderful cookies. Now, I had an episode not too long ago on old-fashioned cookies, and some of these are old-fashioned cookies, but they're different from the other episode, and these are delicious just the same. But with the tricks and tips I'm going to give you, you can make these cookies just as simple and easy as you can, uh, as I can to you yourself. Anyway, today we're going to be making peanut butter cookies. Now, everybody has their own recipe for peanut butter cookies. Let me tell you, there's 10,000 recipes out there. But the thing about this recipe is there's no vanilla in it, which means you need to have a strong flavored peanut butter. Now. Choosy mothers choose Jeff. <laughs> Some people use Skippy, whatever. But then what I'm trying to say is, you just don't want to get a generic brand of peanut butter. You want one that's full of flavor, full of peanuts. That's, we want to have the creamy kind. Now, if you personally prefer crunchy, you can use that. That's no problem. The recipe is still the same. But as far as just becoming a more perfect peanut butter, flavored cookie, you don't want to have the extra crunchiness in there. You just want to have a smooth peanut butter, but you want to have a mixture that's full of flavor. So Skippy, Jif, etc. work just excellent. So let's just start out with making our um, cream mixture. What this is going to be is a quarter or a half cup of butter, which is half margarine or shortening. So what I have is a quarter cup of the Crisco butter flavored shortening and a quarter cup of butter. The combination of the two, what it does, it gives you a wonderful flavor. But chemically speaking, what it does is the shortening will give you a crisp outside of the cookie with a soft buttery filling on the inside. So you can have a nice crunchy cookie and a soft inside. So your cookie isn't totally hard as a rock or it's not softer that it falls apart on you, is what I'm saying. So the combination of the two is wonderful for cookie baking. Next, we need a half cup of peanut butter. Now I am going to be using Skippy, which is wonderful. You can use Jif if you want. I just, like I said before, I just don't want you to take and use the cheapest brand you can find that's on sale. If you're gonna make something good, make something good. You know, use your best product available that you can get a hold of. Granted, I like to, I'm a bargain shopper myself, don't get me wrong. But you know, if you're going into competition, if you're going out to uh, make something to impress your family or friends or relatives or neighbors, etc. You want to get the best ingredients to, you know, flourish that part of you that says you are a good baker. So anyway, so I'm just going to be using the Skippy, which is just fine. And that's a half cup of the peanut butter. And we'll put that into our bowl. Along with this, we're going to be needing a half cup of brown sugar. Now you could use the dark brown if you want to. The only difference is that dark brown sugar has a lot more molasses in it, a lot more sugar content. If that's what you prefer, go ahead and use it. But I, if a recipe doesn't call for it, I prefer using the light brown sugar. And you can just even this off by inside of the bag and pressing it against the side. That's one half cup of brown sugar. And now, I always told you too to save those twisties. 
take a drawer full of them. But they come in handy because when you get these sugars and stuff, brown sugar, white powdered sugar, etc., in your plastic bag, Twisty comes in handy to keep it from getting hard. Then we also need a half cup of white sugar. And we can just level this off just by shaking it into the container. There's a half cup. And then we also just need one egg. Room here. Excuse me. Oh, that was down. And one egg. Oh. Here. And then we'll just take and blend this on slow. It's just starting out. So we don't get, you know, food flying everywhere. Callie loved it when I used to do that. But then she'd have crumbs all over the floor for samples. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to blend this for at least a minute and a half to two minutes so that it's thoroughly combined. And again, you want to take and scrape down the sides of your bowl and get that divot in the bottom, of, especially in KitchenAids, so that all the ingredients are mixed together. Okay, so now for the dry ingredients. And we're going to take and sip this again like we did with our cakes and stuff. It just blends it in so much nicer it makes your product fluffier and lighter and full of air and so that's what you have to sift for even though flour does come pre-sifted the additional sifting is going to make it even lighter and fluffier so for this now we need one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour so we don't need the cake flour because we're making cookies now so you need one and a quarter all purpose and make sure to level this off and just put that right on your sieve and a quarter and other dry ingredients then we're going to be needing a half teaspoon of our baking powder. <laughs> and then next we need three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And again, I told you before, if you haven't baked in a long time, make sure you buy good or new boxes and containers of soda and um, baking powder. Or you can just take and stir up, you know, the container if, you, if it's still kind of fresh. It's just that that top layer gets stagnant. I also need a quarter teaspoon of or so. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to make it rise also light and fluffy. Now we'll just take and sift this in. And the action of, like I said before, the action of this is just to make the flour and other ingredients combine together without having to be heavy and clumping together. And this makes it so much nicer. Now I got some lumpies here. I can just take and just use the back of a spoon and rub this through the sieve. And then there we go with our lumps. Everything's nice and fluffy. Okay, so now we can take and put our paddle back on. And now we're gonna mix this up on low. As soon as the dough gathers together, out. You can finally mix the rest in with a wooden spoon if you want to. Oh, there we go. Stop. Reason being is because we don't want to activate that gluten. If you over mix, which is a very common thing to do, you're going to end up with rubbery, tough cookies. And they're not going to be flight, or light and fluffy. So, just take as soon as that... Uh, 
dough is incorporated and the flour is mixed in, stop immediately. Now, even if there's still a slight floury, I can tell on the sides and stuff, you can use your spatula or wooden spoon to blend its remaining of this in together. It's only gonna take a couple of swift strokes. It's not that hard. And just one again, make sure you get the bottom of the kick of the bowl there, the indentation, to make sure you got everything incorporated. The main thing is it's not to over mix it, which machines do. So you just wanna make sure as soon as it comes together, boom, stop. Because the over mixing will activate that glue and makes it rubberier and tougher. Okay, so then this is all done as far as our dough goes. Now you wanna let this chill for at least a half an hour in the refrigerator, or if you're in a hurry, you can, which isn't recommended, but if you are, you can stick it in the, in the freezer for 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna cover this up with saran wrap, and I'll put this in the refrigerator for a half an hour. And then we'll be back when it comes time to cooking, or baking. Okay, now let's go on to our next cookie. These are going to be uh, oatmeal drop cookies. And these are just a wonderful, wonderful recipe. Um, a little bit different there than your normal oatmeal. There's no vanilla on this one either. So it's gonna have a lot of flavors of all your ingredients are gonna come through naturally. So first of all, what we're gonna uh, cream up first is a half cup of shortening. And again, I'm using the butter flavor Crisco just because it gives a nut better flavor than just plain short. You're gonna have that butter flavor to it. And if you use all butter, then your cookies spread out and they're not gonna hold its shape. So we have that going on. Then we need one and a quarter cup of white sugar. And I'm gonna take and just put on my paddle first. And we wanna cream these together, but I'm gonna take and cream it as I pour in the sugar. So I want to break up that mar that butter, or shortening. And then I want to just drizzle in the one and a quarter cup of white sugar. Rather than putting it all in at once, this helps to break the crystals up easier. So we want to take and cream this until it's extremely light and fluffy. And that usually takes a about three or four minutes. And if you have to set your timer to time your creaming, then go ahead and do it. Because then now you're gonna know it, the difference immediately when you have these ingredients completely creamed. It's much lighter, fuller, and fluffier. It's not gonna, gonna be weighed down. Then along with this, we need two eggs. Let me just get this going here. I'm gonna let this go for a couple minutes and then we'll be a fat. Okay, then scraping down the bowl. Then I'm gonna put in two eggs. I just got mine to cover because I didn't want them at room temperature. <laughs> okay. And along with a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of molasses. Make my quarter cup. And two tablespoons. Now just a little tip just to spray your container so that the molasses doesn't cling to the container, to the measuring cup, and it slides right out. That's a quarter cup, and then two tablespoons. Which is a eighth of a cup, two tablespoons is. Which is half of a quarter of a cup. I know I got these odd measurements for these recipes, but they're not hard to figure out, they're not hard to remember. 
Another thing too is to make sure before putting your cover back on by wiping off the outside of the jar, the rims. Because you know what it's like when you go to try to take it off and you can't, like, especially me with my arthritis. It's like, why won't it come off? Well, you got all that syrup in there and it sticks. This is a good idea just to pipe that off. Okay, we all got, got this all going. And that's coming into a nice brown there. So you want to make sure to scrape the bowl because there's a lot of molasses on the side here from the beater beating it up against the wall. So let's make sure you scrape the bowl. And again, we use KitchenAid as you got that kick on the bottom to make sure you get down underneath there too. Uh, so you want to sift in. I'm going to take this paddle off. Might as well scrape it off here so that I can sift in my ingredients. And for this, we're going to be using all purpose flour. So we need one and one quarter cups of all purpose flour. And level that off so we get an even amount. Because remember the excess amount. And dry it. One and I'm sorry, that's one and three fourths cup flour. So I got one cup along with a half and a quarter. All right. Then we also need a teaspoon each of baking soda. Remember to mix your, up, your soda up in there if you haven't used it in a while. It just gets stagnant sitting on top of the box. So I always mix it up give it to refresh it or I just bought a new box so I'm not worried at all. But if you haven't baked in a while it's a good idea to do that. And a teaspoon of soda, a teaspoon of, of course, salt. <laughs> <laughs> and a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we'll just sift this in. And this, you just do this right over your bowl of your ingredients like this. So it's not a, it's not a big mess. And it goes in rather quickly. And then just use the back of your spoon to rub out any more that you need in there. And of course, salt's a little on the coarse side, so sometimes you're not gonna get all those granules in, so just tap it in. Here we go. Mix this in. Now we don't want to over mix this now and activate that gluten. So just put it on low. And as soon as it's moist and we can stop, we don't want to over mix it. It's so easy to over mix with these KitchenAids. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. You can see it's mostly mixed in. It's still some white in there and all, but that's okay. Because like I said, I don't want to over mix this because I have to stir in the other ingredients, our oatmeal. So by stirring in the oatmeal, if this was all mixed completely, you're overacting that gluten by stirring more. So I want just let that go to just about stirred completely, not quite. Like I said, I still got the white in there. So now to do this, we need to add two cups of rolled oats. This is the whole oatmeal now, not instant. The old one. This is the kind that hardly in, nobody has anymore. <laughs> Everybody gets the instants. I like the instants to eat, but I like the old rolled oats for cooking to give it more texture. Now also along with this we have one cup of um, cut up raisins. Now take one cup of raisins, wash them off, 
put them on a baking sheet and put them on a very low oven just to plump them up approximately 10 15 minutes then here's the part you're not gonna like take your raisins and the scissors and cut each raisin in half <laughs> so that we have all these raisins are cut up because it's gonna disperse evenly more into your oatmeal cookie now Technically, you don't have to cut these up, but if you want the raisin flavoring in there, cut them up in a more dispersed one in tinier pieces. If they're bigger chunks, then you get big chunks of raisins, granted, but little ones you can get more dispersed throughout your cookie. So it, it looks and tastes better that way. But it takes a while to cut up. Oh my Lord. I was, I was watching Our Planet on Netflix, <laughs> watching a whole hour show of Cutting up raisins watching the movie. <laughs> it, it, it took a while. Oh my lord, I couldn't wait for it to end. Oh. But it's well it's well worth it. You can have your kids do it for you. Here kids, cut these up. <laughs> and let's see, then I need a half cup of nuts. And you can use whatever kind of nut you want to. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna be using pecans since I already have some left over here. Ooh, exactly half a cup. I thought it was a cup in there. No, I got a half cup. Okay, good. This way I can get rid of them. And then I'm just gonna take and just rough cut these into little pieces. Again, just like with the raisins, we want to have little pieces throughout the cookie so that you can get a nut on all, in every bite rather than just a big nut here and there. So you want to make sure these are cut up, chopped up, rough chopped. They don't have to be powdery. They don't have to be fine. You want them kind of chunky because you want a piece. We just don't want the whole half nut in there. We have oatmeal, raisins, and our half cup of nuts. Okay, now that's it for that. Let me get the oven going here. Put them big, and this is gonna be at a 400 degree oven, so it's a rather hot oven, and they're only gonna be baked for eight to 10 minutes. So now we can finish off this batter, this cookie dough, by stirring these other ingredients into it. Now this way, we're gonna have all the flour mixed in, along with your oats, nuts, and raisins, without activating that gluten, because we don't, we're not mixing with the mixer, and we're not over mixing because we got it just on that edge from the mixer. So it's just a few strokes and we're done. Now we just drop these by teaspoonfuls, tea, teaspoonfuls onto our parchment paper. You can just grease a cookie sheet. Now I like to use the parchment paper rather than greasing. Number one, it gives it a cookie. It helps it not to burn as easily. So you're not having the dough on metal. You know, you got it on the paper. And then it also makes cleanup so much nicer. Just take off the paper, throw it away, boom, there you go. You don't have to worry about scrubbing off the cookie sheet. So let me just get my cookie sheet with a piece of paper, parchment paper and my cookie scooper. Here it is. And we just do these approximately, ooh, these are going to spread out a ways. You want about two and a half to three inches apart from each other. Uh, I'm going to have to do three. Because these are going to spread out. And I just don't want them to run into each other and deform the shape and cling to each and bake together. So I'm just going to put, do three down and then do two. So there's room in between. Can I just alternate my rows like that? 
then I can be a little bit more safer so they don't blend in together. So I was packed, uh, set these up, and then we'll bake these. I set, I got a 400 degree oven, and they're gonna go from eight to 10 minutes. So let me just finish these off, and we'll put these in the oven and bake them, and be right back. Okay, now, I got cookies all over the house. <laughs> The oatmeal cookies are cooling, so I can use the racks again, the cookie sheets. And now I have the peanut butter cookie in uh, on the dough here. What we do is take and your cookie scooper and scoop out into your dough balls. And just roll those up and place them on the cookie sheet. You know, stag them, stagger them around in your rows like we normally do. And you don't roll them in sugar. The secret to this one is you dip your fork in flour. Then you go back and do your crisscross with the tongs and just dip in flour every time. Not sugar and flour. This is a different way of doing it. But this way, what you're doing is getting a whole flavor of peanut butter from your cookie rather than having all the excessive sugar on it. Now, as a kid, I loved them when we had, you know, rolled them in sugar and that. But now, as an adult and me being diabetic, you know, the, the more I can stay away from excessive added sugar, the better. But just, uh, these are just a different way of making the peanut butter cookie. It just gives you more peanut butter flavor than all that excessive sugar. Now, after we crisscross these, and we're gonna put these in a 375 degree oven. And then these will be baked for eight to 10 minutes. So then we just can take, you know, put those in. And what I like to do is I always like to put my first rack in, first sheet in first on the three quarter rack. And the second one's like, a, like I got it like a third down and two thirds out, whatever. But I'll put it on the lower rack for the first half time, like four minutes. And then I'll transfer it to the upper rack for the last four minutes. And when I transfer to up one, then I can put the second sheet in on the bottom. So it's just a matter of rotating your cookie sheets around with the heat. And when I go from the bottom rack to the upper rack, I turn the sheet completely around. Now that way too, you're gonna get more even baking. Instead of having the cookies near the back usually get browner quicker. So this way they get heated evenly, more evenly. Unless you have a fan, conven conventional oven, then that makes it even nicer, and you don't have to do that. But I just got the old fashioned kind. Oh well, it works, it works. So now we'll put these in, 375 for approximately eight to 10 minutes. And then we'll be right back. And here we have our lovely cookies, the peanut butter cookies and the oatmeal drop cookies. Don't those look delicious? Mmm. Oh, Kelly, I like cookies. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed these tips for making these cookies. I know these are the ones that are going to be entering in the fair, and hopefully I might get something. I haven't done the fair, gosh, in quite a few years, so I'm going to try again and see what I can do. But these are just some lovely ideas and tips and tricks for your cookie baking to make sure that your cookies turn out right. So for Northwest Cooking Show, I like to say eat healthy, be safe, and spread the sunshine. Bye-bye.